Presenting the user with a request for an App Store review is a good way to get feedback on your app. They can both be a blessing and a curse, and I don't know why, but a bad review sticks with me for a far longer time than a good one does. Nevertheless, getting some good reviews helps downloads and encourages you to fix bugs and make your apps better. Hi, my name's Stuart Lynch, and in this video, we're going to be looking at how you can use the SK StoreKit Review Controller to make that request on our behalf. We're going to do that in an iOS 14 app, and in our case, it'll be Swift UI based. However, the implementation will be the same in a UIKit application too. If this is something you want to learn, then keep watching. I've created a starter project that we can use, and you can download the project from the link in the description below. This is a very simple sample app that was created using SwiftUI. The application has three views. On the initial view, content view, there's a single button that toggles a Boolean value, the show second view, which then triggers a navigation to the second view. The button has a button style called filled rounded corner button style that I've included here just to make our code more concise. If you're interested in learning how to create your own custom styles, I suggest you watch my videos on custom styling. I'll leave a link to the button styling video in the description below. The custom style is included in the custom button styles file. The second view is basically the same with another button with a different color that takes you to a third view. And on the third view, there's a simple multi-line text view. In this application, each time the user reaches that third view, we want to be able to present a request for reviews and ratings. Now, we don't want that to be overly aggressive in always asking for this, so we'll need to add some guidelines to that. More on that in a minute. I call reaching this location the trigger point. It's the place in my app where I want to possibly present to the user a request to review my app. So let's investigate how we do that and it has changed in iOS 14. We want to show the request when this view appears. So we can do this in our onAppear function associated with the view. So let's add that now. The call to request an app review is part of the StoreKit API, so we'll need to import that first. Now, prior to iOS 14, we could simply use the simple SK Store Review Controller function called Request Review. Unfortunately, as you see, this is now deprecated. This function requires an argument, which is a UI window scene. The scene is part of an app's user interface with a lifecycle managed by the system. An application can now have multiple scenes and the app instance's shared singleton has a connected scenes property that is the set of all connected scenes that are in memory and potentially doing active work. A connected scene may be in the foreground or background, and it may be on screen or off screen. For a single scene application, we can access the scene from uiapplication.shared.connectedScenes, and since there's only one, we can access the first one and cast it as a UI window scene. We can then use that in our request review function. Now this is an optional, so let's use an if let so that we can call the function only if it finds the scene. As I mentioned, however, you can now have multiple scenes on an iPad where you can have an app running in two different windows. If we are to request a review, we need to know which of the scenes to present the request on. What we need to do is filter out and find the first scene that is active and which is in the foreground. And we'll do this using a WHERE clause where we can compare the scene's active state to being the one that is the foreground active. Let's try this out now. This works, but do you see a problem? It shows the request for the review every time you open that view. In fact, 
Apple won't even allow you to make that kind of request. In development, you are always going to see the request when you make it, and that's for testing. However, in a published app, that's not the case. Apple tracks the number of times you make a request, and it will be displayed to a user a maximum of three times within a 365-day period. So choosing when and where to display this prompt is critical to your success using this API. Let's get the code out of this view here, as this is not best practice anyway. So let's create a new file that we can use in all of our projects. Now we could create a singleton class for this, but it's not necessary. We're just going to create a function that calls this code. So it could be a static function in any class or struct. And even better, let's use an enum, as you would never attempt to initiate an instance of an enum, and it's safer. So it will create a new file called app review request. Inside that file, I'll create a new enum of the same name. And inside that enum, we can create a static function that I'll call request review if needed. I'll return to my third view and cut out that code from the onAppear function. And I can return to the app review request and paste it in as the body of the function. Now this creates two errors. The first one is because it doesn't understand UI application. And UI application is part of UI kit. So let's import that instead of foundation. The second error is a result of missing the store kit. So let's import it. Returning one last time now to the third view, we can, in the onAppear function, call our static function, that is, the static function on our enum. Now, the one thing I didn't do here, which I should have done, is remove the store kit import. It's no longer required here because we've moved that code to our enum file. This still hasn't solved our problem of making the request every single time the view appears, however. But we can do all of those checks now in our enum function. So now that we have that static function, we need to think about how and when we're going to present the request. So things to consider are, should we only decide to present the request if the version has changed? That means only present the request once per release version. That seems to make sense. And secondly, we should require a number of times that the user reaches the trigger location before we make the request. So in our case, this means that we should not make the request every single time the user reaches the third view. There should be a minimum threshold. So on a new build, they won't immediately be presented with a request for review. So we need some things to track this information. So first of all, let's create a static variable that will represent our threshold for the number of times that we reach the trigger point prior to making the request. So let's call it threshold, and you can decide what the value is going to be, and that will depend on your application. For testing purposes, let's just set it at three. And we also need to track how many times we reach that trigger point, so we can compare it to our threshold. And we can store that number in user defaults. And since we're using Swift UI in our app, we can use the new app storage property wrapper. But this feature requires that this file also import Swift UI. So we can use that instead of UIKit. With that done, we can use the key runs since last request and apply it to a static property of the same name and we'll initialize it at zero. Now an enum can't use a stored property, but the enum itself can have a static property, so we're fine with this. Next, once we reach the threshold, we need to determine if the version of our app has already made a request. What we can do here then is that when we make the request, we can store the version number as a string in user defaults, and then when we reach our trigger point, we can see if the current version is the same or different, 
and then, if we've reached our threshold, request a review. This again is the case for app storage. Now this time our key will be version and we'll initialize it as an empty string using version for our static property name as well. Now each time the request review if needed function is called, we should increment our run since last request. So we can do that within our function. And for testing purposes, I'm going to print that out to the console too. We'll need to determine what the version is so that we can check it against our save string in user defaults. So let's switch to your app's target. And on the general tab, you'll see two fields. One is version and the other is build. If we open the info.plist, we'll see that 1.0 shows up as the bundle version string short, but I don't see the build value. And this turns out to be the bundle version, and it gets it from the value from the current project version. Well, this isn't version, it's build. Confused? Don't worry. If we open the plist as source code, we'll see two keys. CF bundle short version string, which represents what I'm calling our version, and CF bundle version, which represents the build number. Now we can access those key values in our code by the bundle.main.object. So let's set up two variables for that. If we say let app build equals bundle.main, we'll see that there is an object for info dictionary key that returns the value associated with the specific key in the plist. And for the app build, that key is CF bundle version. We also need to cast that as a string. For app version, the key is CF bundle short version string. Now you may be wondering why I want to check for both, since we only want to check for updates that will be presented to the end user, and they'll never see incremental builds, only versions. So all we really need to check is for the CF bundle short version string. But during testing, I don't like to change the version numbers, only the build numbers. So I want to see if my code works when I change the build number or the version. So we can form a string from both and we can compare them with the version in our user defaults variable we created. So let this version equal the string interpolations of app version followed by the build. Let me also for testing purposes print this to the console. Well now that we have that we can compare to version and react if they're not equal. On the first run, when I reach the trigger point, I'll be comparing it to an empty string, which means it's not the same. So something is different. And if we compare that to run since last request to see if it's greater than or equal to the threshold, we can then request a review. So that means we can move our code for requesting a review right into this block. Then after we've made the request, we can then set our version, which is in user defaults, to this version string. And then we should reset our run since last request back to zero. Now there's only one more thing that I recommend you do. If the versions are equal, I suggest that you set your run since last request back to zero and only start your increments after a new build. That way, the user will not be prompted for a review as soon as a new build has been released and your increment count matches or exceeds the threshold. That's it. Time to test. Our threshold is set to 3, so let's run the app and make sure our console is visible. First time we reach that third view, we see that there are not enough runs to warrant a request. Same with the second time. 
With the third time, however, now, our threshold has been met and a review is requested. The next time our count is reset and we're getting a run count of 1. And as you see, this happens every time that we reach the third view. Unless, of course, we encounter a new build or version. So let's try that. Let's change the build number to 2. And let's run again. First time the run count is 1, but we're seeing a new string that shows the new build number, so this is different from the last time. And the next time our run count is increased to 2. And on the third time, we get a request for review. After that, we're back to the continual run counts of 1, so a review won't be presented again until the next update. There you have it. A nice, concise file that you can copy to all of your projects. Just remember to set your threshold at a reasonable value and that will depend on how often your users will reach the trigger point. And that trigger point is where your action does the app review request, request review if needed. So one last thing to remember. In testing, when you reach the trigger point and the version has changed along with meeting the threshold, you'll always be presented with the review request. In a real app, no matter even if these criteria are met, your users will only be presented with the request a maximum of three times over a 365-day period. I have lots of other videos available and in the queue as well, so please check out the rest of my channel. You can also visit my website to see the apps that I have available on the App Store, and visit my GitHub page to see what I have available as public repositories. If you like what you've seen, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And ring the bell to get notified when I post new videos. I'm most active on Twitter, so please follow me there as well to find out what else I'm up to. Thanks for watching.